And we're back with uh, Katawa Shoujo. Apparently there were chirping birds, so... Normally, this would be a good time to reflect upon the beauty of nature. What it is 6 a.m. Covering my head with the pillow, I slam my face into the mattress, hoping that the impact will send me instantly back to sleep. Futile. I toss and turn, but sleep simply won't return to me. Alright, nature, you've won. See? I'm getting up now. The lack of sleep weighs my mind down. There's only one remedy for this. A nice, hearty breakfast. It'd be nice to be the first person here. To be the first to dig in the piling hot pile of food to sit wherever I desire. It would have been nice. But even my exceptionally early start has put me behind the most diligent students. I guess there are quite a few people that have early starts here, for one reason or another. A group of students in sports clothes huddle around on one table, eagerly discussing a plan and game plans in between inhaling great gulps of food. Scattered around the hall are a number of bleary-eyed students, probably suffering the, the same ailment as myself. Noisy birds. And of course, there are people that actually enjoy getting up this early. The ones with their bags stuffed with textbooks and completed homework. It's hard not to despise people like that, even more so when you're tired yourself. Picking out a familiar face from the thin crowd, I head towards the nearest table. Lily sits alone, delicately feeling her way around a small plate of eggs with her fork. It's almost a shame to interrupt her and her clockwork movements. I wonder this, if this is. I wonder. Is this how a blind person zones out, simply moving in a predetermined pattern or learned over the years? Just like how a sight in person would eat while reading a newspaper? Good morning, Lily. I didn't expect you to be here this early. Oh, it's Hal. You startled me. I, <laughs> what was that? I didn't know you took breakfast this early. I don't. This is an exception to the rule. I greatly prefer to be late to school than early to breakfast. Lily really gives a small sigh at my admitted tardiness as I begin eating my food. It doesn't take long for her to lapse back, for her to lapse back into a previous mindless nibbling. Each short motion lacks energy. I suppose this is similar to letting your eyes wander while performing any ordinary chore. But after a few repetitions of the food eating food cycle, Lily puts down her fork and dabs her lips with a napkin. Sal, do you mind if I ask you a question? Oh, here we go. Damn. All I wanted is a little food for hours of sleep, and about four hours of sleep, and nobody says, Can I ask you a question for a simple question? Sure. Oh my god. Do you think of Han Hanako as a friend? Huh? It seems like a leading question. I guess so. Why do you ask? No real reason. I do have another question though. Why is it that you think of her as a friend? This is well above my level. What is she expecting from me? I'm not really sure. I guess it's because she's a little different in the way she deals with people. Hmm. Since I've known her, she hasn't really connected with anyone. She doesn't seem very interested in other people, and I think people are a little scared off by her appearance. Really? I thought that kind of thing was, well, discouraged around here. Discriminating and such. Hmm. If I were put to put it one way, she furrows her brow in thought and moves with a move which makes me slightly anxious as to what she's plucking from her mind. I'd say that you're a little naive. Naive. I'd be insulted if not for the slightly cynical grin on her face. I see. While Yamaku has a strong sense of community compared to other schools, it's far from being free of conflict. Rules cannot remove human nature. After one, after all, only repress it. 
that's nothing I've known that's something I noticed actually there's little things that like how certain people and clicks avoid each other in the hallways it's no different than my old school really even though Lee and Shizun can be considered better bitter rivals even though they both seem like a fairly accepting people they both seem like fairly accepting people well at least the Misha tinted Shizun does who knows what actually goes on with her fingers behind her glasses <laughs> I guess you're right right when I first came here everything was a bit of shock I kept on making mistakes or at least thinking I was making mistakes like when we first met I said I see to you I didn't know if I was considered rude or anything so I tried to put it in the back of my mind treating people any differently and that kind of thing so I didn't I told myself that Hanako and you and everyone else was just normal I tried to ignore the obvious I talked to Hanako as if she were any other person and so we became friends at least that's how I think it happened but you know I feel guilty just for saying something like that aloud as it took extra effort to think of Hanako or you or anyone here as a normal person I don't think that's right Sal, I think you are naive, but I also think you're a good person. This is perhaps one of your best, better traits. I suppose... I suppose I can take that as a compliment. Tell me, are you- Whoa! Are you free tonight? Excuse me? What? If you don't count homework, then I'm free as a breeze. Ooh! In that case, would you care to join myself in an alcohol for tea? Er, I don't know how- uh, I don't really have that much money at the moment, so going out isn't really- Oh, I didn't mean going out, just here, this evening. You can ask, access the classrooms in the evening here? No, that's not what I meant. Hanako, Hanako and I often use my room for tea parties together. Please feel free to drop by after dusk. Sure, I see no problem with that. What's your room number? 225, room 225 on the second floor. Okay, sure. Well then, I had best be off. I have class representative duties to attend to, after all. Until this evening, Asal. Yeah, catch you later. Hang on, hang on, was I just invited to a girl's room after hours? Is that even allowed? <laughs> There's a curfew here, but I've never heard of any rules about visitors in the dorm rooms. Even still, this is enough to get my sleep deprived brain jump started. Added to the lukewarm breakfast and uh, you have one hell of a pick me up. I grudgingly go to class and still a little excited about the <laughs> about the prospect of breaking the rules. Ooh, you're a rule breaker, kid. I feel a little like a kid planning to sneak out of him on his window at night. Well, maybe that's going a little too far. But when you compare an invi invitation to be to a party. The six or so hours of lectures, I know which one wins. Misha and Suzune do a little relieve, do little to relieve my boredom either. For once, they are determined to actually complete Matau's assignments. Nevertheless, the day eventually winds to a close. I hurry back to my room to wash and comb my hair. Thankfully, I don't run into Kenji. <laughs> Before long. I'm leaving the boys dorms, oh yeah. Good job, Isel. You're doing it. You're 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 doing it, Isel, yep. Mm -hmm. I nervously wrapped it on the door, Mark two twenty five, checking my watch once again. Is that you is that you, Sal? The door's open, you can come in. Um 
I think I just did the options. This, you know, that, that's not gonna happen in this part. Don't worry, I'm just doing it for later. I just thought of it. Don't. They're just. We're just having tea. This is the first time I've been invited to the girls' room after dark. Trust me, nothing's going on. Even though I know there's no ulterior motive behind this invitation, it doesn't stop me from my mind running with wild possibilities. One guy, two girls, in the dorm room with a tea set. Yep. When I put that <laughs> like that, it sounds a little dodgy. Giving a small sigh to steady myself, I gingerly put up my hand on the handle and opened the door, craning my head to see inside. Wow. The door is open completely and I catch my first glimpse of Lily's room. Her furniture looks almost antique, but with bare walls and flat surfaces are barely decorated at all. In the center of the room sits a low table where I see a small tea set at rest. It seems that everything in this room has its place, possibly accepting the several piles of books stacked up against the wall. How come uh, Hanako doesn't have a tea set? You know, tea, you know, tea cup? My sense of vision isn't the only one to be stimulated. The faint smell of something that can be picked up on the air. Nail polish, perfume, makeup. It's hard to describe in any other way than girly. My eyes finished their quick sweeper of the room before returning to their position onto the girls. <laughs> Lily sits next to the small table wearing very dark blue pajamas. Dark blue pajamas with shorts that show off plenty of her alluring tail legs. Opposite of her, opposite her, Hanako sits adorning in a conservative light pink gown. Her hands are firmly fixed between her legs, her shoulders forward, and her head down as if trying to hide herself in it. It'd be easy for her to do it. it looks like it's about two sizes too big for her. Waves of flannel flow in from her frame making her look like a child playing dress up in her parents clothing. Why well, you gotta bring out parents man? She looks up to confirm my identity and begins a thin <laughs> and the beginnings of a thin smile creep across her face before vanishing so fast that I can't be sure that they ever they ever were there. There's no point in standing in the doorway Sal. How do you know? I take a step into the room, closing the door behind me. By my, I'm afraid this is really a small room for the three of us. Would you like to take a seat? I slowly walk to the table and sit down, trying my hardest not to disturb anything along the way. I also can't help but steal a quick glance into Lily's top as I sit. <sighs> to be robbed of sight would be most terrible fate. You know, Lily can't see, but I know Hanaku can see. I bet she saw that. <laughs> well now, how about some tea? Hanaku, could you please pour? S sure. H Sal, would... Would you... Would you like... I would love some tea. Do you need a hand? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Lily really finds it difficult to resist a smile at her, at her companion's nervousness. Something I can't really blame her for. It's a cute smile. Been a tiring day. Yeah. I relax at my place opposite of the cabinet. To my left is the blue clad Lily, and to my right sits a pink Hanako. The, the tea set on the table looks cute as well as practical, painted red with a floral motif. It looks odd when contrasted with Lily's plain but generally sophisticated looking furniture. Which leads me thinking which means which leads me to think that Hanako might have picked it out. There's a slight ting when Hanako accidentally clips a tea pot on a cup as she is pouring. She breathes in sharply. She must have been nervous. she must be really nervous. As it's not that kind of Thing anyone would worry about. Hanako quivers at her mistake. It's okay, Hanako. 
There's no need to be nervous. Hey, you ain't gonna be honest, right? Nako seems to find some confidence in Lily's reassuring soft-spoken words, and definitely pours the next two cups. You are, Sal, Lily. Nako carefully places a cup and saucer in front of Lily and myself. I can get used to service like this. Thank you, Nako. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. Lily searches for a cup, and upon finding it, sips delicately. I do the same. This tea, the tea tastes somewhat better than the tea we usually have at the school. This is nice. It's so different from any tea I had before. Looks like you picked the right one, Nako. You've done well, even if it was a bold move. And Nako's smile as returns is redoubled. Even with her blighted face, her shy smile couldn't be called anything but cute. I'm glad you like it. Nako finally begins to relax, sip from her cup. Something about this makes me think about Lily's question after breakfast. at breakfast. Why am I friends with Hanako? Lily seems genuinely concerned for Hanako's well-being, but it's not like I can do anything about anything to help her. As far as I can tell from her scars... Oh wait, as far as I can tell, her scars don't hold her back physically and everyone I've met seems to have overcome their disabilities to some extent. I don't have any ulterior motive to hang out with Anako. We just share the same similar interest. Isn't that enough? So is how? Are you enjoying yourself? Lily's well, words break me out of my revere. I can take a second to reconsider where I am. I'm in a room with two girls in their bedclothes. This is something to be enjoyed. Yeah, it's relaxing. Almost like I'm not in school anymore. Do you do this often? Quite often, but not as often as we take tea in the school building. Considering that they do that every day, that's not a big surprise. As I move to take another sip to my, from my tea cup, I find it sadly empty. That was delicious. Thank you, Anako, Lily. You're welcome. Yes, you're more welcome as Sal. It's nice to have the third party here. Well, anytime you need something to fill that position, I'm always available. No, always. One more. <laughs> one must be sure to get one's point across in their some circumstances. Lily lets a loose a yawn, which she unsuccessfully hides with her hand. <laughs> Pardon me, I think I'm a little tired. I think we're all a little tired. My, my, how astute we are tonight, Hanako. We really should head to bed. We all have glasses tomorrow. Yeah, I should go too. Thank you for your presence, Sal. Thank you. You'll come again? Not even a whole army could stop me. I'm impressed by your determination, Sal. Either way, you're right. We'd best be get going. <clears throat> I stand up and make for the door. Hanako gingerly stands up behind me. I stop and face her. Are you coming with me? Hanako instantly blossoms into a full blush. Oh man, no, I not. This room isn't. It's okay. I was only joking. Oh, okay. Good night. Good night, Hanako. Good night, Asao. Night, all. And with that, our tea party finishes. I'm still not sure what it is that Lily wants me to do for Hanako, but I don't want to let her down. I wait until the door has closed behind us before returning to Hanako. Hey, Hanako. You know you don't have to be nervous around me or anything. I mean, we're friends, right? We're right. We're friends. If you ever want to hang out or anything, just let me know. We still need to have the chess, a uh, chess rematch, remember? Sure. But I don't think you'll win. Ooh, ooh. it wouldn't be any fun if it wasn't easy. 
Malco seems to give a muted laugh, but she could have just easily been exhaling. Exhaling. Good night, Hazel. <laughs> With that, Malco quickly retreats into her room located next to Lily's. I start to walk back to my dorm, but the simple act of walking seems to drain me of my energy. I barely make it to my room before I am hit by a wave of exhaustion. I kick off, I kick off my shoes, fall into bed, and fall asleep. By the time my head hits a pillow. Aren't you supposed to be taking pills, like, in the morning and, like, at night? Aren't you supposed to be taking those? This how? This how? Pills! Thank <laughs> you.